Hey and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about Bubble Sword. Bubble Sword is often the first sorting algorithm that people encounter, and it's used as a way to introduce people into sorting algorithms. We'll examine to see how Bubble Sword works and as well as how it compares to other sorting algorithms. To start off, let's go through and visually see Bubble Sword in action. Right now I have an unsorted list of numbers. Let's sort this list with Bubble Sword and try to figure out what visually happens. Based on this work, we can see that we're taking the highest element marked in green and placing it towards the end of the list. After it's placed at the end, it gets marked as sorted and we repeat the list until every single element is marked as sorted. And this gives us an intuitive way of thinking about how bubble sort works, in that the goal is to bubble up the highest element in the list until the list is sorted. So now, let's walk step by step through to see how bubble sort works. Like before, we start off with an unsorted list with the goal of having the sorted list at the end. Similarly to other sorts, we want to do this by iterating through the list somehow. For bubble sort, we rely on two key factors. One, for our current element, if it's bigger than the one to the right, that means we need to perform a swap between these two. And secondly, if we have performed no swaps during this iteration, that is, no element is bigger than the one to its right, then our list is sorted. Else we'll go through and reiterate through the list again until we're done. Below me, I have a list with the numbers 1, 2, 0, 4, and 3. And our goal is to transform it into a list of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We can start by going through our first iteration of this list. And while we're going through this iteration, we'll also keep a track of whether we have swapped during this iteration or not. For our first iteration, we go through and stop at 1 to see if it is bigger than the neighbor to its right. In this case, it's not, so we don't swap and move on to the next one. Since 2 is bigger than 0, we'll perform a swap between these two and set the swap variable to true. We then check again to see if it's bigger than the neighbor to its right, in this case being 4. Since 4 is bigger than 2, we don't have to perform any swap. And lastly, we'll do the same thing for 3. Now that our first iteration is done, we check to see if we swapped any numbers during this iteration. Since we swapped at least one number, we have to perform another iteration through this list. For the second iteration, we'll set our swap marker back to false, and we'll iterate through the list starting at 1. Starting this iteration, we see that 1 is bigger than 0, so we perform a swap on these two. As we iterate through the rest of this list, we see that there are no more elements bigger than the element to the right. However, since we at least swap one string list list, we have to iterate through the list again. In our final iteration, we don't have any element that is bigger than the element to its right. And when we reach our last element, our swap marker is still false and our sort is finished. You may have noticed bubble sort is iterating over the elements that are already sorted once it reaches the end of the list. And we can optimize bubble sort slightly by not iterating over elements that are already sorted. So with that in mind, let's take a look at bubble sort in action against a larger list with our current element being marked in green and sorted elements being marked in red. It's also interesting to note that the best case of bubble sort occurs when the list is already sorted. In this case, we only have to iterate through the list once since every element is smaller than the element to its right. And conversely, the worst of bubble sort occurs when the list is sorted in reverse. In this case, we will have the maximum number of comparisons since every number is bigger than the element to its right. Taking a look at the visualizations below, you can see that the drastic difference between the average, worst, and best case varies quite a bit. And for runtime, bubble sort has a runtime of O n to the power of 2 as its average runtime complexity. In comparison to other sorting algorithms such as quicksort and merge sort, its runtime is significantly slower than its counterparts of O n log n. Now let's see a visualization of the three sorts in action. It's also cool to know that bubble sort also has a best case of ON, which makes it better than quicksort and merge sort, even if it is an unrealistic standard to meet. 
In summary, bubble sort is often the first sorting algorithm that people encounter, and used as a way to introduce people into sorting algorithms. But due to its poor runtime and simplicity, it's often only relegated to being an introduction and nothing more. And that's it. In my next video, I'll be discussing how merge sort works and how it compares to other sorts. Thanks for watching. Until next time.